Now, it's been one of the most enduring images in British music, the 19th century painting of the dog Nipper listening to his master's voice from a wind-up gramophone. But the company name, shortened to HMV, could soon become a thing of the past. This afternoon, HMV followed other big high street names like Jessops and Comet into administration, putting 4,500 jobs at risk in 239 stores. But the company says it's convinced it can find a solution, as our business correspondent Siobhan Kennedy reports. The shutters rose for trading this morning, but for how much longer? HMV is one of Britain's best-known high street brands, but it's been struggling for years in the face of tough competition and changing spending habits. Now it's thrown in the towel and thrown 4,000 jobs into jeopardy, its future dependent on finding a buyer. I love HMV and I've, I've spent many a, a year there, but I don't shop there as much as I used to. Physical media is dead, I'm afraid, and uh, that's it. But yeah, shame. Yeah, I think that's what's killed a lot of this stuff, really. Downloading, because obviously, like 50p and stuff, and it's a lot cheaper than buying a 11 quid CD or whatever. So. There was anger too, as customers were told Christmas gift vouchers were no longer valid. I might as well throw these in a bin there. HMV used to be a giant of the high street, but in recent years, larger rivals like Tesco and Amazon have undercut them on price. And at the same time, more of us are downloading our music digitally rather than buying the physical product. The company, though, is convinced it can re-emerge as a smaller, leaner, more competitive store. The question is, can it? Is there life in the old dog yet? Well, HMV's management seems to think so. It's hoping this dark day could be HMV's new beginning. And its boss was unusually upbeat for a man whose business has just gone bust. And I really think that people have a great deal of love for HMV's business. Prior to Christmas, we were ranked as one of the top 10 retailers to have on people's high streets. And but I, that, with respect, that hasn't helped the business thus far. So I think it's my responsibility as the CEO of that business to deliver the plan I have for it and take this team of people and that business forward. So we have to evolve our store operations and how they look and how they feel. We have to create a new online platform that is more compelling and engaging and entertaining for the consumer. He's right. You can be successful selling CDs and records as this store, Rough Trade, in London's East End, testifies. Sales have been up here every year since they started in 2007, and now they're opening their first store in New York. We like to think that the purchase is 1% of music retail, the 99% is the experience. Therefore, this store, our stores, are very celebratory. They're very conducive for discovering music and spending time. And ultimately, a record store is is somewhere to hang out for, for people who love music and to do that you've got to provide an atmosphere that is conducive to that and not a very smash and grab high street environment. So. Clearly there's room for smaller independent stores like this one. They're not only surviving, they're thriving. The question is, should the government do more for some of the bigger stores who are struggling out there on the high street? It didn't intervene to help Comet and Jessops, together a loss of nearly 8,000 jobs. But will it try to save HMV? Or will another high street icon be allowed to disappear, perhaps in the hope of making way for new, stronger rivals? So what can and should the government do to save the high street? With me now from Westminster is the Communities Minister, Don Foster, and in the studio, Labour's Shadow Business Secretary, Chukka Umuna. Are these just badly run businesses, Chukka Umuna, or should the government take some responsibility for them all going to the wall? Well, look, I think this is incredibly important. Retail is our largest private sector employer in this country, one in ten jobs roughly. It plays a very important role in particular giving young people the first step on the career ladder. 40% of our 16 and 17 year olds work in retail. So government has a role to play. And I think the important thing is that you've got government working in partnership with the sector. And we need a sector specific industrial strategy to help the retail sector. Part of it is about demand. And you know, you'd expect me to say I don't think the government has helped on that front. But also it's adapting to changing circumstances. And in some respects, we're victims of our own success in the UK because we're at the vanguard of what they call multi channel shopping, where we've got people shopping online, the third biggest internet online shopping market in the world and so we need the demand but 
if you want to succeed in this game, you've got to innovate, you've got to ensure that you're adapting to the new ways of working. And in part, I mean, it's interesting to see rough trade. I used to shop in London, in Soho, at Black, Mar Black Market Records, very famous name in ind you know, the independent record store world. Why they've succeeded Black Market Records is because they very successfully integrated their online operation with actually the physical historic store in Soho. And that, in part, is where you know, government has a role to play because one of the things the government can do, for example, to help in that is by ensuring that we have got the right digital infrastructure. Okay. They've got to get moving with the rollout of um, um, super fast <clears throat> broadband, for example, because that's important. Don, yeah. Don Foster, you've got a retail strategy uh, in the government, but when Comet, Jessops and now HMV are going to the wall, it's not working, is it? Well, I mean, the crucial thing is to recognise, as you just heard, that there's a changing dynamic in the way in which people are shopping. The huge growth in internet shopping uh, has made a huge difference, and that's why it is important that we do what we can to help this business uh, readapt to the changing climate. And, of course, if sadly shops close, and that's appalling for the individual employees, uh, we will make sure that the rapid response unit of job centres in the, each locality will do all they can to help. But the crucial thing the government has got to do is to continue to provide the sort of help we are now providing uh, to the high street, providing additional funds through the Portus Review. But that's not working, is it? And, well, These I businesses mean, the, are going bust by the day. The, the reality is, if you have a look at the figures, if you take the supermarkets, for example, uh, they've announced that over the next couple of years, they're going to see something like a growth of 1,500 uh, 15,000 new jobs that are going to be created in their stores. So but there is some very good news. And of course, overall, let's remember that in the last two and a half years, uh, the coalition government has delivered a million brand new private sector jobs. Ch Chakramana, how interventionist retail. should the government be then? Well, it's got to be active and it's got to... I mean, look, you can't have a one-size-fits-all industrial strategy for every sector. They've got to work with retail. Now, what they're telling me in retail, the hike in VAT in the short term caused massive damage to their industry. People stopped spending, which is why we've argued for a temporary cut in VAT. They have complained bitterly about the way that business rates are assessed and calculated, which is why I've invited the British Retail Consortium to submit into Labour's policy review proposals in that respect. They've taken far too long, frankly, the government to get the, a role out of super fast broadband and of course as the sector's changing people skills wise are going to need to change as well a lot of these man you know mid um, 40 people in their 40s or 50s and managers in comet jessup etc they are going to be made redundant at the, at the moment at a time when they're going to have qualifications that they got 15 20 years Don ago Foster? and we've got to well, update look, our <coughs> skill system as well and the government has been dragging its feet on that too let, let's be clear about all of those things. I mean, first of all, the government has provided a stack of measures that are really helpful to the retail industry, particularly small businesses with the reduction, uh, with the increase in the amount of money available through the small business rate relief, which we've extended for another year. We're providing help through apprentices, through the Portus Review. And in terms of things like rollout of superfast broadband, uh, I'm delighted to hear that the Labour Party are now talking about superfast broadband they weren't going to roll out superfast broadband. There have been hiccups and delays caused by uh, negotiations with the European Union. We've now resolved those and we're getting on with it and it's vitally important. And we'll continue to provide further forms of assistance, not least through the work we're doing through the apprenticeship scheme uh, and getting the skills that are needed into the retail sector. What about the VAT point? Well, you know, the Labour Party are reducing taxes left, right and centre and they don't say where uh, they're going to replace the lost income. You know, it's very easy to say you will do all of these things unless you've got a strategy for what else you're going to cut. That's why the overall package of the government, which has given the confidence in the international markets that has helped to keep interest rates low, which is vitally important, is one that we've got to stick with. It is beginning to deliver the, what we need and, as I say, has created a million new private sector but, but, jobs. But the problem, Don, is, look, we've seen over 50 major administrations now in the retail sector impacting well over 50,000 jobs. I think what people want from government, and look, I'm trying not to get too knockabout Very here. briefly. They we... want you to actually get a big bazooka here and do big things. OK. And, for example, today, major administration, you're the first government minister who's been we... out and commented on this. We, we've got to leave it there. Thank you both very much indeed. Don Foster, Chukrumana. John.